In this video, we'll be looking into the important concepts of second module that is functional testing of software testing subject. So starting from the second module, we have three standard topics here, three types of functional testing. The first one being boundary value analysis. So boundary value analysis, what are the types and limitations could be asked for 10 marks. So if you cover this uh, theory part, no, you can easily uh, form the test cases when uh, we are solving the problems. So first, uh, let's look into the definition. When a program is tested with test cases designed to include values at boundaries of input domain, it is called as boundary value testing. So the idea is to test uh, to uh, the idea is that mostly the errors are likely to occur at the corners or the boundaries of input range rather than inside the range. So by focusing on these boundary values, we can detect the uh, potential errors and solve those defects. So the input, the program input forms its domain and the output forms its range. So this uh, boundary value analysis is also called as input domain testing. So depending on the input, we are forming a domain and further testing those domains, right? Next we have uh, the four variations. So in boundary value analysis, there are four variations. The first one being normal BVA, then we have robust BVA, worst case BVA and robust worst case BVA. So let's consider this uh, graphical representation. We have A and B. So x1 and x2 are the two variables. I have a and b. So a and b are the limits or the range for x1. So x1 can start from a and end with b. It has to be between these two only but coming to x2, x2 could be between c and d. So any point between this, suppose I take a as 100 and b as 200. So x1 can lie between 100 and 200. If I take 150, so 150 is a valid uh, input for the function. That is any point inside the shaded region and boundaries is a legitimate input to the function. So this was about the basic understanding. Let's move on to the types of BVA. First we have is the normal BVA. Normal BVA is pretty simple to understand. So in normal BVA, we'll be making use of uh, uh, five points, okay, five test cases. So five test cases will, will, will deduce those test cases such that uh, one will be the nominal value. We'll take ma minimum and maximum as it is. Firstly, we'll take the minimum followed by the maximum. Minimum and maximum are taken. And on this side also, I'll take minimum and maximum, done. After that, I'll take nominal value, that is middle value among the range, okay. Then after that, I'll take minimum plus. Minimum plus is here. I'll, I'll depict the minimum plus and maximum plus also would be uh, represented here. So that's how we get this graph. And uh, this is the, these are the values which are used to perform the testing. So suppose if the range is 1 to 100. So in the range of 1 to 100, my minimum would be 1 and maximum would be 100. We know that. Now nominal value. Nominal is we can find the middle value. That is middle value of 1 to 100 is 50. So nominal would be 50. Then coming to minimum plus. Minimum was 1. Minimum plus would be 2. Then maximum was 100. Maximum minus would be 99. So this is how we deduce the test cases for normal BVA. Looking at the explanation here. So this is a black box testing technique. Yes. And uh, BVA is based on critical assumption that uh, single value, single fault assumption theory. So single fault assumption theory states that uh, when if you are considering three values, uh, if you are considering three uh, input cases, we can say that error is occurring only at one input. That is only, the, the, the fault is only uh, detected at one particular variable, not the rest of two. So the rest of two would have the nominal values and the third one would be of the single fault. Uh, it, it would contain the fault. So this is about single fault assumption theory. So one thing to write, uh, for BVA is that uh, all the cases follow single fault assumption theory. So yeah, it is, um, we have seen this then in which we derive that the test cases on, for, on on a fact that failures are not due to multiple occurrences of facts. So we derive the test cases by holding values of all, but one variable at that nominal and allowing the, fa uh, the variables, uh, variables assume its extreme values. So uh, this statement is what I have explained in simpler terms. Okay, next along with this, so when you're writing about the uh, normal BVA, no, make sure you, you draw this. Along with that, you write single fault assumption theory example. And this is the next important thing. That is 4n plus 1 test cases would be de deduced in this particular case. 4n plus 1 test cases means here n is the number of inputs. So if I have three inputs, it could be uh, 4 to the 8 plus 1, 9 test cases would be generated. This was about normal BVA. Let's look into the limitations of BVA. So... Uh, boundary value analysis works well for the program uh, which has several independent values and uh, they are like bounded between the physical limits okay but then coming to the boolean and logical uh, logical variables they form problematic 
and along with that bva assumes variables to be truly dependent which is not always possible then test cases can have uh, been found rudimentary because very little insight and imagination so as we are considering the black box testing here we don't have the complete insights about uh, what is the code structure and all of that so in this case we have very limited knowledge so either input is output ah depending on input output we have to deduce the test cases so it, we, we we have a very little insight and uh, it mostly works on our uh, imagination and not just that at times uh, there could be loopholes where uh, the testing could not be performed properly so those are the limitations of bva so if they ask limitations make sure you write these five points properly coming to robust boundary value testing robust boundary value testing is uh, extension of the normal bva here we make use of minimum minus and maximum minus so here we make use of minimum minus and maximum plus so previously in normal bva we had five uh, five variables uh, five values five test cases which we deduced sorry five test uh, testing parameters which we deduced here we have uh, five plus two that is seven values could be deducted from the graph so each dot represents a test value here so previously uh, as we have seen in the previous graph it is the same but then here these dots are extra this one and uh, this one this one and this one and this one so we are considering uh, minimum was there less than minimum also we are considering suppose if i take 1 to 100 so if i take 1 to 100 uh, the ranges would be 1 to 100 for normal bva i can write minimum minimum plus nominal maximum and maximum minus 99 coming to robust bva i'll have minimum all these whatever were inside i'll write it as it is along with this two more elements would be added that is minimum minus minimum minus means i'll get minus one here and maximum plus maximum plus means one not one here so this is about robust bva so i have seven test cases here so uh, we have to write these seven points uh, first thing second thing we cross the boundaries we focus on exception handling so when we cross the boundaries what are the exceptions arising so to, to take care of that we make use of robust boundary value testing that is one point second point is a uh, single fault assumption theory it follows then it has six and plus one test cases so if i take three here so there are if there are three test uh, three inputs so it will be six uh, six into three plus one uh, that is 19 test cases would be generated so each dot represents a value so this is quite common in electric and electronic circuits that is moving beyond the uh, uh, the limits and testing so this was about the robust boundary value testing moving further we have worst case boundary value testing in worst case boundary value testing uh, we follow the sim single fault assumption firstly and uh, after that um, sorry in, in this we don't follow the single fault assumption we reject the single fault assumption and uh, here we have here we generate here we generate phi to the power n test cases okay so phi to the power n test cases means uh, suppose if i have three test cases three inputs three input variables so it will be five power three that is 125 test cases would be reduced for worst case boundary value testing so we consider all possible boundary conditions including all combinations of minimum and maximum value so for each variable we start with five set that is minimum minimum plus nominal max minus and max so we take the cartesian product of these to generate the inputs so yeah this was about the boundary case uh, boundary uh, the worst case boundary value testing looking at the robust worst case robust worst case is combination of worst case plus robust so it follows the generalization pattern of boundary value analysis so it has certain limitations uh, like uh, dependence like independence depending on the uh, the the factors okay uh, the limitations could be reduced so the best applications of this uh, is where physical variables have like numerous interactions and uh, when failure of a function is extremely costly so here we have uh, seven power n test cases would be deduced for robust worst case testing so this was about the entire bva along with this we have one more concept that is special value testing special value testing depends on the inputs which we give okay so we can have uh, several inputs uh, which would which would be all the which would have all valid cases only when you are taking inputs such that all are giving valid outputs only those come under special value testing so this was about uh, bva now let's look into uh, examples okay so the first example we have so the first example we have here is the triangle problem the standard triangle problem so 
uh, we'll be deducing uh, the boundary value analysis for triangle problem we have to consider all the three or four uh, conditions okay all the three or four types so starting from the first normal bva in normal bva the range they have specified for a b c so here when you are writing this no make sure that you write the precondition precondition is that there will be three input values a b c obeying the range from 1 to 200 after that you will write what are the uh, outputs which you will be getting that is either uh, if it's a triangle if it's a triangle it will be equilateral isosceles and scalene if it's not a triangle then uh, not a triangle output would be given so after that you will write this point okay so in normal bva we have phi set which comprises of minimum minimum plus nominal max minus and max so the range they have specified is 1 to 200 we can take any range we can take 1 to 10 also okay and uh, expected output you need not write properly because see in case of boundary value in case of triangle problem okay you can say if two sides are equal we get isosceles and the but then when it comes to commission problem and all it will become difficult to calculate and write right so you can skip the expected output part but focus on this focus on deducing the test cases and here you can write description okay you can consider the description part here so looking at the first normal bva we, have, we discussed about the five test cases we follow the single fault assumption and four n plus one test cases that is four into three plus one that is we have 13 test cases how will we write 13 test cases is the main point here so first let's uh, sing, single fault assumption assumption says that only one variable will have the fault that is the two variables i'll keep the nominal values firstly in a and b first phi a and first phi b i, I kept it as nominal values and i change the values of c that is 1 to 100 199 and 200 next uh, here i wrote if uh, if it is 100 101 it is isosceles 100 102 isosceles 100 100 100 equilateral 100 100 199 is isosceles and 100 100 200 is not a triangle coming to next after after checking the five conditions now i'll keep a and c a and c values nominal that is 100 100 and i'll change the values for uh, the b value here, if I see, I have to write 1, 2, 100, 199, 200. 100, 100, 100. And here also 100, 100, 100. It will keep on repeating. No? So I need not write the redundant values again. So I can skip that. So I'll have only 6, only 4 values here. That is 100, 100 isosceles, 100, 200 isosceles, 100, 199 isosceles, equilateral. And uh, next I have, oh, this is isosceles, sorry. And here I have 100, 200, 100. That is a not, not a triangle. This is isosceles and here not a triangle condition. So looking at this part, I'm done with, um, I have uh, put the fault values in C, fault values in B. Now I'll put the fault values in A. Okay. So keeping B and C constant. So here I'll get 1, 2, 199 and 200. So if you check, I've, I've written 13 test cases here. So I have obeyed the condition. So this was about the normal BVA. Looking at the robust BVA. Robust BVA is slight variation of normal BVA. We, we will consider minimum minus and maximum plus. So for 1 to 200 range, minimum minus would be minus 1 and maximum plus would be 2 not 1. And 6 and plus 1 test cases, that is we have 19 test cases. 19 test cases are there. You need not write all the 19 test cases again. You consider this. These are the 13 test cases. No, write a statement here. We will consider the first 13 state the, the first 13 test cases of normal BVA and further we, we have to include these test cases that is we will take 1 and 2 uh, in the first test case uh, we will consider C value and then for B and then for A that is we will keep A and B as nominal value and uh, C for first we will take min minus and uh, the second value will take max plus it goes the same for B also it is min minus and here max plus here also min minus and here max plus so we know that whenever uh, the inputs are beyond the range beyond the specified range it results not a triangle so we have got the output as not a triangle so if you consider previously in bva we got 13 uh, test cases and here we got uh, six test cases so it is 19 test cases that is obeying the condition of robust bva right next we have the worst case Worst case, Andre, we have 5, 5 to the power n, that is 5 to the power 3, 125 worst cases should be generated. 125 worst cases, we cannot write it, no. So, we'll write the first 25 worst cases. Okay, writing this is pretty easy. So, in A, start with A, write 125 times, then 225 times, 125 times, 199 25 times, 225 times, and then stop. You'll reach 125 test cases for A. This is only for A, I'm telling. Next, for B. For B, write 1 5 times, 2 5 times, 100 5 times, 199 5 times, 200 5 times and repeat entire B. 
coming to C, write uh, each of them one one time. One once, two once, hundred once, one ninety nine once, two hundred once, and repeat the C until we reach the end condition. So understanding this with an example here, so we took we took from one to twenty five test cases. So one to twenty five for A, I kept it as one 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 one. For B, first five I wrote as one. For then next five two. Next five hundred, next five one ninety nine, next five two hundred. Coming to this part, this part, I will write the values once only. Okay, that is one two hundred one ninety nine two hundred. Again one two hundred one ninety nine two hundred, and it keeps on going. I hope you have understood how to deduce the worst case. I would suggest you to understand this particular part properly, and if possible, you can write this in exam also. Write this along with this some uh, some theory part, uh, and you can draw this also. Okay, let's move on. Further, we have the boundary value analysis for next date problem. So in this module, no, we have three standard problems: a triangle problem, next date problem, and commission problem. So we have to deduce boundary value analysis, or uh, be it the equivalence class testing or decision table making for each of those. Okay. So looking at this BVA, uh, we have to uh, firstly we'll take in this BVA, no, in in next date function they have directly given uh, the worst case. Okay, so we'll look into only the worst case. Okay, so minimum, minimum plus nominal, maximum minus maximum. So for month, date, year, we know the ranges. Month ranges from one to twelve. Date ranges from one to thirty-one. Year ranges from eighteen twelve to twenty twelve. So here again, month twenty-five times you write one. Okay, after that year, uh, after that uh, date, date one you write five times, two you write five times, fifteen you write five times, thirty you write five times, and thirty-one you write five times. Done with the date. Now year. uh one eight this each of these repeat one one time that is 18 12 once 18 13 once 19 19 12 once 2011 once 2012 once and this keeps on repeating so that's how we explain all the 25 test cases so this was about the bva for next date uh, problem looking at the commission problem so commission problem again we have for uh, for the logs we know the limits 1 to 70 for stocks we know the limits 1 to 80 and for barrel we know the limits 1 to 90 So deducing the set for lock it will be one two thirty five seventy and sixty nine, and for stock it will be one two forty nine eighty and seventy nine. For barrel it will be one two forty five ninety and eighty nine. So again writing the worst case for this also. So it will be from first. Uh, so this one I'll write it as twenty five times for a. I'm I'm considering only for the first twenty five values. No, so a I'll write it as twenty five times for b. I'll write one as five times and continue two as five times, forty as five times stocks stocks I'm telling this is logs and for barrel each one of them one one time I'll repeat so one as five times I wrote for the first five here here also one as five times and for barrels I'll repeat them again again for six to ten range for log one five times two five times and the same one five times forty five times and the same one five times eighty five times and the same. One five times seventy nine five times and the same. So this is how we deduce the worst case, uh, worst case BVA for commission problem. So this was about the BVA uh, topic which we have looked. Uh, one more topic we have is the random testing. In random testing, we generate random numbers to pick the test cases rather than choosing the. We generate the random test cases here rather than choosing the limits. Okay. So in order to Uh, generate like uh, in order to generate the random test cases we have a formula also that is x is equal to int of b minus a plus one star random plus a so here integer returns the integer value and this random helps us to generate the random value between zero and one so this is not that important uh, if they ask random value uh, if if it is asked to generate random value for any of the question you can just consider uh, four five random values which you can take. So this was about BVA. Let's move further. We have equivalence class testing. So in equivalence class testing, uh, firstly we let's look into the types of equivalence class testing. What are the advantages and all of that? So firstly we have definition of equivalence class testing. So it is a form of partitioning or uh, partition of set. Okay, they form a partition of test. So here we identify the test cases by using one element from each equivalence class. So, if equivalence class are chosen wisely, this reduces the potential redundancy among the test cases. So, this is one of the advantage of uh, equivalence class testing. So, the the elements of subset have something common, right? So, the idea of equivalence class testing is to identify these test cases by using one element for each equivalence class. 
So the key point in this is that we should choose the equivalence relation uh, efficiently, like properly we have to choose. Okay, so uh, let's look into the types. First we have is weak normal. Weak normal is uh, accomplished by using one variable from each of the equivalence class in the testing. So that is identify equivalence classes of valid classes. So test cases have all valid classes here. So we detect fault due to calculation with valid values of single variable. So this is acceptable for uh, the regression testing. So we need an expanded set of valid classes here. So if you consider this class, a between A to B we have taken one equivalence class, between B to C we have taken one equivalence class and between C to D we have taken one equivalence class. So that was about weak normal. So see here if you look the equivalence classes which I have written for um, X1 A to B madhidalli on the equivalence class here bodhu uh, B to C madhidalli on the equivalence class here bodhu C to D madhidalli on the equivalence class here bodhu coming to E to F E to F madhidalli on there bodhu X2 and F to G also one could be there uh, coming to invalid so if I take for invalid between A and D between A and D uh, if I can take uh, X1 is greater than A X1 is greater than A no, it is not possible. X1 is less than A. Sorry, X1 is less than A. It is not possible. And uh, X1 is greater than D. It is also not possible. It will be here. Something not possible. It will here also. It is not possible. So those are the valid classes and uh, invalid classes. Going on further, we have strong. We have weak robust. Weak robust is uh, to identify equivalence classes of valid and invalid classes. So previously you considered only the valid classes. Here you will consider the invalid ones also. That is this part. This part we decided and this part also we included. These two parts. Okay. Previously we didn't take those two parts. But here we are taking those two parts. So test cases have all valid except one invalid test case. So detect, uh, we, we can detect faults due to calculation with valid value of single variable. And along with the valid value of single variable we can also include uh, the invalid value of single variable to detect the defects, faults. Then this weak robust equivalence class testing is acceptable for regression testing. So we have understood how it is uh, in the graphical representation. Next moving on further, strong normal equivalence class testing. In strong normal equivalence class testing, uh, we, we consider the multiple fault assumption. Okay, So we identify equivalence classes, valid equivalence classes, valid uh, variables. So test cases from Cartesian product of valid classes. So between A to D only valid classes they have considered. Detects uh, fault due to interaction with va valid value of any number of variables. So here we are not restricting to only one variable. That is we have taken so many variables here right. Between A to B we have considered all the possible cases. So it is okay for regression testing but better used for progression testing. So this was about the strong normal PVA. Looking at the strong robust. So in strong robust we have uh, we are considering all the uh, valid and invalid e uh, classes. Okay, so we identify equivalence class by valid and invalid uh, classes. That's what we have discussed here. And test cases form Cartesian product of all the classes. All the classes you are including for strong robust. So it detects fault due to interaction with any value of any number of variables. Previously it was a valid variable, but then here it is any value of any number of variables. This is okay for progression uh, regression testing, but uh, progression testing is. Uh, suggested or preferred. It is the most rigorous form of testing. So it obeys uh, this uh, Jorson first law of uh, software engineering applies here. So this was about the definitions or the types of the equivalence class testing. Let's look into the next rate function. So firstly looking at the next rate function here we have the valid equivalence classes which have specified. So month could be between 1 to 12 month could uh, date could be between 1 to 31 and year could be between 1812 to 2012 coming to the invalid classes if month is greater than uh, if month is less than 1 one case if month is greater than uh, third 12 one case if uh, date day is less than 1 i have one case day is greater than uh, 31 one case year is less than 1812 one class one uh, case and year is greater than 2013 is another class so here i have three valid classes and here i have six invalid classes moving further because number of valid classes is equal to the number of independent variables only one weak normal equivalence classes uh, we can obtain this one weak normal and strong normal would be the same that is in weak normal and strong normal we'll be considering in weak normal and in strong normal we should consider only one a possible uh, variable such that we get 
valid output so in order to get valid output i'll enter the month within the range uh, date within the range and year also within the range so that's how i get the expected output so this was about weak normal and strong normal now we we'll look we we'll look into um, weak robust and strong robust so here i have a weak robust examples so in weak robust examples guys it is pretty easy to deduce weak uh, robust so firstly i will take valid input first cases i'll take valid input after taking the valid input here i'll write i am considering the weak robust case right so uh, firstly i'll take valid input as i'm deducing for month date and year right i'm taking for date month and year sorry month date and year only month date and year so i'll take valid input it could be 6 uh, 1 and um 1999 okay next i have to take date invalid next i'll take one one variable first i took date invalid then month invalid then i'll take year invalid once i'm done with date month year i have to take uh this is one range one scale i've taken suppose uh like we know the we know, we know the classes right we know the limits for uh, date it is 1 to 31 for month it is 1 to 12 and for year it is 18 12 to 2012 so first date invalid i can take it as minus 1 and second date invalid that is i'll take it as 32 next for month first invalid value i'll take it as minus 1 and the second in value invalid value is after 12 i get 13 no i'll take 13 next for year i'll take 18 12 so i'll take 18 11 as first invalid and uh, this side i'll take 20 13 as the invalid so this is how i can deduce the weak robust test cases speaking of the strong robust speaking of the strong robust firstly i'll take date invalid then i'll take month invalid then i'll take year invalid followed by that i'll take combinations now date month invalid i'll take month year invalid then i'll take date and year invalid and last i'll take date month and year all as invalid so this is how we deduce the test cases so once you write the uh, values here no for month date and year you should write the description part also you you need not write the expected output okay write the description part that is these things so looking at here that's what i've done date invalid date invalid 1 i took and 32 i took and for month i took 1 and 13 and for year i took 20 13 and 1800 so done coming to strong robust strong robust again the same i took uh, uh, not just one so here i took first date invalid then month invalid year invalid date month invalid date year in uh, date month invalid and uh, here i have date year invalid and uh, date year invalid and i have uh, month year invalid and all are invalid so none of these will give input value but none of this will would have uh, a proper output but make sure that you write the description properly here description is important rather than the uh, expected output or input postulating the following test cases this was for uh, in the previous example here what we did was vague understanding of month and year but then we have to look into the leap year condition also if it is december if if it has the day if the month has 31 days uh, or 30 days or 28 days and all of that so month has 30 days month has 31 days month is february coming here date we have a date could be from 1 to 28 or it could be 29 or it could be 30 or it could be 31 year could be 2000 or year could be a non leap year or it could be a leap year so moving write the strong normal and uh, weak normal here firstly looking at the weak normal so in weak normal valid input valid output should be there so i'll i'll consider four cases here so the first one um, you can write 6 14 2000 and seven second one is 7 29 1996 230 2002 2002 and i'll write 6 31 in 2000 month date year so these two would be invalid these two would be sorry 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 these two would be valid and here i have invalid inputs so this was for the weak normal coming to the strong normal in strong normal we have uh, how many test cases do we have here so 
into 4 into 3. That is 3 into 4 into 3. 36 test cases would be generated. How will you uh, maintain these 36 test cases? So, in the, we have made use of these four values, right? So, we have to consider these four values and then deduce the 36 test cases. Let's look into, uh, let's look, how will we do that? So, first the 6 is there, no, each month, when you are writing, write it 12 times, okay? Month into 12 times and re repeat it, repeat for all the values. Next, this 14 is there, no? This 14 should be, each day, day into three times and repeat it and keep on iterating. Then each year, you write year into once and repeat it. So here I have three values, right? So I'll get 36, 12, three is a 36. So these three are the, uh, again, I need not repeat the six. So here I have 36. So it goes the same for other cases also. So this is how we deduce the weak normal and strong normal. Coming, speaking of weak robust and strong robust, we get the output same as the one we had got for the previous case. So this was about the next grade problem for equivalence class testing. This may not be asked in exam. They'll just ask us to define the, uh, the next grade problem and deduce the normal uh, for the normal test case. Okay, for these normal values. These values, we have to deduce the test cases. Moving on further, we'll look into the triangle problem and commission problem now. So looking at the triangle problem here, equivalence classes for triangle problem. Here again, firstly, we have, uh, we, we should write the classes, right? Valid classes. Either it could be ABC former triangle, ABC former isosceles triangle, ABC is scalene, and then it does not form a triangle. So firstly, writing weak normal, strong normal. It is same for both. So, I'll write all the valid conditions. All For all these four conditions, they have to obey. Right. Such that I'll write. So, equilateral isosceles scalene and order triangle. Coming to weak robust. In weak robust, we know for A, I should write two test cases. For B, I should write two test cases. And for C, I should write two test cases. So, I have written it accordingly. Next, here one valid range should also be included. Okay. I have not written. So, seventh one, I can write one, one, one. It will be equilateral. Then coming to uh, this one. Uh, strong robust. Speaking of strong robust, I'll take A invalid, B invalid, C invalid, next AB invalid, BC invalid, AC invalid, and then I'll take ABC not in range. So this was about the equivalence class testing uh, for triangle problem. We we'll look into commission problem now. In commission, the valid cases are log should be between 1 to 70 or it could be minus 1. If log is minus 1, the program would get terminated and then we'll calculate the sales and commission directly. Then I have uh, S1 that is sales should be from 1 to 80 and barrel should be from 1 to 90. Opposite of this, if it is not in this range, it will come under invalid classes. Looking at the strong normal, strong uh, weak normal here, we know valid input should be there. So valid input I have given. Coming to weak robust, weak robust only, one valid input should be there and then I will take one terminating condition here, minus one barithre, what barithre anta? Terminating condition, then I will take two uh, two, two invalid cases for the lock, two invalid cases for the stock, and two invalid cases for the barrel. So two plus two plus two, six values I've got. One valid case and one minus one case. That is totally I'll get eight test cases for weak robust. Going on further, for the strong robust, I'll consider the case ID and uh, uh, yeah, for strong robust, lock is out of range, stock is out of range, barrel is out of range. Lock, stock, lock, barrel, stock, barrel, and then lock, stock, barrel. All the values are being changed. So this is how we write the equivalence classes for the commission problem. Moving on further, we'll look into the decision based or decision table or decision based testing. So again, a theory in this also either they can ask definition or explaining how a decision table is constructed or they can ask uh, draw a decision table for a triangle problem or any other problems. So looking at the definitions, decision tables are used to represent and analyze the complex logic relationships. So they are ideal for des describing the situations with number of conditions of actions. So based on a particular condition, what action should we see here? A decision table has four portions. So the first portion is the condition stuff that comes in the right, uh, the leftmost corner. Okay. So here we specify the conditions. Then we have, uh, this is the condition stuff. Then we have the condition, uh, condition entries. So this is where we entry, enter the conditions. Then we have the action sub and uh, action entries. So uh, this part, 
the value centered for condition would be either true or false and coming to the action part it could be x that is um, obeying that particular condition and performing so and so action if there is no action being performed then leave it as empty looking further we have rules so rules indicate which actions to take place when a particular condition is specified so depending on the condition you will be taking a, a, a particular step in that particular rule okay so limited entry decision table is uh, in which all conditions are binary extended entry decision table is in which uh, the table is having conditions with several values so we use decision tables for test case identification so this completeness pro uh, properly property of decision table guarantees a form of complete testing so decision tables are declarative that condition and action follow no particular order so here the rules which you are specifying you there no there may not be any specific order okay you can fill anyways uh, however you wish to but then it has to be uh, like prop like it has to be valid okay so this is the for triangle problem here i have written the conditions either a b c is a triangle then i'll see if a is equal to b a is equal to c and b is equal to c coming to action part a no a is not a triangle then i'll i'll take it as scalene isosceles equilateral and impossible condition at all so first i'll take for rule 1 i'll consider abc is not a triangle okay i'll write false here so when i write false here what should i check here so if if abc is not a triangle what will be the action the action would be it is not a triangle output would be printed as it is not a triangle anta then coming to the next rule here i'll take all the conditions as true so abc form a triangle a is equal to b a is equal to c and b is equal to c when all these cases are obeyed then a is equal to c a is equal to c uh, a is equal to b a is equal to c and b is equal to c that means it is iso uh, equilateral triangle right so i can put a x in the equilateral triangle moving on further here i'll check now here all true conditions have taken no here i'll take one false condition so that is i'll take here false condition and here i'll maintain all true okay here i'll check if b is not equal to c a is equal to b and a is equal to c if b is not equal to c a is equal to b a is equal to c means it is not forming a, a triangle at all it is not obeying the condition at all so i'll come at the impossible case next for this c3 i'll take false condition and rest i'll put it as true here again if a is not a is not equal to c and a is equal to b and b is equal to c how how is it obeying right so i can take again impossible condition so here i hope you have understood the step a is equal to c one is equal, um, i can take one is equal to one a is equal to b and here i have one is equal to one c also then i can say that b a one is equal to one right but then this is not satisfying it is what they have specified here that means it is a impossible condition okay here false i wrote here false i wrote now i'll write false here rest all i'll keep it as true so again it is a impossible condition moving further now i'll take two two values as false this all i'll keep it as true only okay now here i'll take two two values as false first i'll take these two as as false so when i take these two as false i'll come under the isosceles condition that is a is not equal to b a is not equal to c but then b is equal to c that is one pair of sides are equal when one pair of sides are equal i can uh, put them under isosceles condition so here it will be isosceles next i'll take two uh, i took uh, c2 and c3 as false no no i'll take c2 and c4 as false So C two and C four as false again. It will be isosceles. Now I'll take um, these two done. These two done. I'll take these two. C three and C four as false and C two. I'll keep it as true. Again, it is a scalene condition. Now here, now that I have uh, reached the end, I'll take all false. Okay. When I take all false, but A B C is a triangle. It comes under scalene condition. So I hope you have understood all these steps. Uh, if not, I would suggest you to watch the video again and. Uh, analyze yourself okay so if i take here false what action would happen here okay this was about the triangle problem now we'll look into the like enhanced version of this that is we'll be making use of the rule count also rule count is uh, it keeps uh, a track of how many rules are being accessed so usage of don't care entries has a slight effect on the way in which we complete the decision table so here we'll be making use of the rule count rule count is 2 to the power n conditions 2 to the power n rules would be there okay so let's start from the conditions look looking at the conditions here so firstly i have c 
of a C1 as A is less than B plus C, B is less than A plus C, C is less than A plus B, these three. Then A is equal to B, B is equal to A is equal to C, B is equal to C. Rule count is there here. Again, A is not a uh, triangle, scalene, isosceles, equilateral and impossible. So firstly, I'll take this as false. And if A, A is less than B plus C is false, then it is not a triangle. Next, I'll take uh, this one. Now, this is false, rest all, I'll take it as empty. Right. So how many conditions have I taken as empty? So before that, I'll, I'll calculate what is the total rule count. In order to calculate the total rule count, how many conditions do I have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. 6 conditions are there. 2 power number of conditions. So that would be 2 power 6. 2 power 6 is 64 rule counts would be there. In 64 rule counts, the first rule, I took 1 as false, rest all I have taken as blank. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. 5 conditions I have taken as blank. So I will write 2 power 5. So 2 power 5 value is 32. So out of 64 rule counts, 32 rule counts are already covered here. So I will write rule count as 32 here. Next moving on further, here I will check. So if this is false, rest all I will take it as true. Okay, 11 rules I have taken. Okay, next I'll, I come to this condition. B is less than A plus C, I take it as false. Uh, once I took this as false, rest all, I'll take it as true. We have checked one condition where it fails. Now, rest all conditions, I'll make sure that they are true. And here also same. Here also I'll take it as false, rest all, I'll take it as true. So for these three conditions. So if I take B is less than A plus C is... Uh, is false again it is not a triangle and here also it is not a triangle if i take c is less than a plus b is not is is not true then again here how many are uh, i've put as blank 1 2 3 4 2 power 4 2 power 4 is 16 2 power 4 16 next i'll take here 1 2 3 3 are empty so 2 power 3 is 8 i have so 8 i can write here so after this now i have to check um, rest all conditions so first i'll check first i'll take all as true so true, true, true. When I take all true, now let me draw a line here so that we don't get confused. I have taken all as true. When I take all true, it is an equilateral triangle. This The triangle condition it is satisfying, that is, it is a triangle. Now here I have taken A is equal to B, B is equal to C, A is equal to C, that is all sides are equal, then it will come under equilateral triangle condition. Now I will take one by one, one by one, okay. So here, what should I write in rule count? So all are uh, true. Here nothing I have left as blank, so I will put it as one, okay. Next, I'll take one as false. So I'll take one false. So if, sorry, so it has to be here, sorry. So if I take one false and rest all true, if I take one false, rest all true, it is impossible condition. Again, write one here. Next here, I'll take one false. Not a condition. Here I'll take again one false. Impossible. Now I'll take combinations of two, two falses. So first these two are false, then these two are false, then these two are false. So in all these conditions, it will be isosceles. So rest fill it as true. Now here I'll take all false. When I take all false, it is a triangle, but all the sides are not equal. That means it is a scaling triangle. So when you add this, we'll get the count as 64 only. So this was about the second, uh, the enhanced decision table with rule counts. Moving on further, we'll look into the next date function. So in next date function, I have the rules as uh, M1, M2, M3. That is month is 30 days, month is 31 days. So I'll write the rules here. M1 is like 30 days. M2 is like 31 days. M3 says it is February. For D1, it is 1 to 28. For D2, it is 29. And for D3, it is 30. D4, it is 31. So year 1, year 1 is 2000. Year 2 is not leap. And year 3 is a common year. So let's fill the table here. So in order to fill the table, we'll be making use of 16 rules here. And I've written all the conditions. I've taken only 3 conditions here. So that is month, uh, date and year. Here I've taken the uh, cases. That is A1 is impossible case. And then I have increment the date, increment, uh, increment the date, reset the date. Increment the month, reset the month and increment the year. So this is the second try which I have written. Okay, first try you can write write it normally. So you can take only three test cases. That is, month should be from one to uh, thirty one. Year should be from eighteen twelve to twenty twelve. And uh, sorry, date should be from one to thirty one. Year should be from eighteen twelve to twenty twelve. And uh, and uh, month month should be from one to twelve. And date should be from one to thirty one. 
so this is the second try in exam they can probably ask the second try because first try is pretty simple so let's look into the second try now so starting from so starting from this part so firstly i'll take uh, all three three possibilities okay i'll take three m ones in month followed four m ones in month sorry then four m twos and then rest all m threes so from uh, nine i have taken m3 as all next in day in order to fill the day i'll start from d1 uh, d2 d3 and d4 conditions after that again d1 d2 d3 and d4 condition and again d1 d2 sorry here 9 10 11 i'll take d1 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 okay again here i'll take two d uh, three d2s and here i have two so here i'll take one as d3 and one as d4 coming to the year part year part uh, i'll leave i'll leave the first eight as empty because in year i have three conditions right first eight i'll i'll leave it as empty from the ninth year i'll start year 1 year 2 year 3 then again year 1 year 2 year 3 and i'll leave rest to blank so you'll understand how why i've done why i've chosen this sequence when we are looking at the uh, action part so if you see here the rule count would be 3 Here also rule count would be three. Here also rule count three, 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 and three. Coming from here, here uh, all are filled. So one, 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 one. Here again one is empty. So three and three. So this is about the condition part which we have filled. Looking at the action part now. So if I have taken month as one and day as one, uh, M one and D one. M one is thirty days and D one is twenty eight days. So a month says that thirty days should be there. And here I have one to twenty-eight days. Suppose if I take sixteenth, so it is possible, right? So I can increment the day. Only day I should increment. Next, coming to month M one and D two. M one and D two. That is, month is month says thirty days should be there, and I have twenty-nine days. That is again increment the day. Now again I have M one and thirty. So month says thirty. Yeah, day is also thirty. When month is thirty, year is thirty. Then I can say that I should increment the month, not the day, right? So I'll increment the month along with the day. Also, I'll increment. So if I have uh, for uh, for April, if I take for April, it has thirty days. No, an input I gave as thirty March some two thousand. Okay. In this condition, what what all will I change? I'll change thirty to one, and here thirty to four, and here two thousand as it is. That is, I'll increment the day. I'll and I'll increment the that is I'll reset the day, I'll increment it. And I'll increment the month also. I'll reset the day and and I'll increment the month. Coming to this M one and day thirty one. Month says thirty days should be there. Day is um uh, beyond that. So when day is beyond that, what will I do? Uh, here again I'll reset and increment. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We have to look into is month is one M one and D four M one and D four. Month they have told thirty days are there, and here thirty first thirty first day is considered. This is impossible condition. No, this cannot happen. Moving on to the fifth condition, uh, M two and D one. M two and D one. Thirty one days, twenty eight days. It is increment the day again. M two and D two. M two and D two. Thirty one days, twenty nine days. Increment the day. M two and D three. Again increment the day. And uh, M two and D four. Uh, M two and D four only. I have to reset the month. Reset the day and increment the month. Reset the day and increment the month. So I have not by hearted this, guys. Uh, it is all uh, here. I am checking and here I am filling the table. Okay. So here coming to M three and D one. M three and D one. February twenty eight days. February twenty eight days means uh, what will I do? I have to check the year also here, right? Year Y one. Y one they have told us two thousand. So two thousand being a leap year. Um, here I'll fill it as increment the day. That is next day, twenty ninth day. I can go. Next, here I have M three and uh, D one. Sorry, D two. M three and D one again. Sorry, M three and D one. And year is incremented. February twenty eight days, not a leap year. February twenty eight days, not a leap year means again I can increment the uh, D one value. The day value I can increment. 
नेक्स्ट आई हैव नेक्स्ट आई हैव हियर इज एम थ्री डी टू एंड वाई वन एम थ्री डी टू इज ट्वेंटी नाइन डेज एंड वाई वन इफ इफ दिस इज द केस फेब्रवरी ट्वेंटी नाइन एंड टू थाउजेंड देन इट हैज टू इंक्रीमेंट दैट इज डे विल बिकम वन मंथ विल मंथ विल बिकम मार्च एंड इयर वुड बी द सेम दैट इज आई विल रीसेट द डे एंड आई इंक्रीमेंट द मंथ कमिंग टू दिस एम थ्री डी टू वाई वन एम थ्री डी टू वाई वन सो फेब्रवरी टू ट्वेंटी नाइन एंड इयर फेब्रवरी ट्वेंटी नाइन एंड इयर वी हैव डन दैट increment sorry here reset day ala increment day here it will be reset day and increment the month next looking into the next condition we have 13 that is uh, we have m3 d2 y2 m3 d2 is 29 february y2 not a leap year if it is february 29 and not a leap year i can consider reset the day and increment the month so i'll take reset the day and increment the month so moving on further for 14 15 16 it will be impossible because they are telling m3 and d3 d4 d2 d3 d4 m3 is february february early d2 is 29 and here they are taking d3 as 30 and d4 as 31 here year is uh, a common year so in that case it will be impossible so rest all impossible i'll fill it so this was about the second try for uh, next date function Now let's look into the decision table based testing for commission problem. So the price is specified here, sales are specified, and common. What is the commission also have specified? Starting from the conditions. So the first condition is true here. True under uh, sales uh, lock is equal to minus one. Whenever I have lock is equal to minus one, I should terminate the loop. I should calculate the total sales and commission. So here I have written x and here x and x. Okay, rest all I have taken false here. After true, rest all false. Coming to this part. Uh, next i'll take 2 2 as true okay so i'll take c2 c3 as true then c4 would be false c4 false means barrel is false so here invalid barrel ali i put a x and i'll find the log stock barrel value next i i took uh, uh, lock and barrel as true when i take lock and barrel as true so stock would be invalid and again i'll calculate the lsb next i have uh, written i have taken invalid barrel invalid stock now i'll take invalid lock that is for uh, stock and barrel i'll take it as true so it is x here invalid lock and find the lsb moving on further we have uh, now that we have taken two two combinations let's take one one combination so first i took lock as true if i take lock as true stock and barrel are invalid i'll calculate the lsb value then i'll take uh, here stock as true when i take stock as true lock and barrel would be invalid and finding the lock stock barrel value then i'll take here these two are true now i'll take this as true when i take this as true barrel as true lock would be invalid stock will would be invalid and i'll find the lsb value next i'll take all false when i take all false lock is invalid stock is invalid barrel is invalid invalid i cannot find anything further next here i'll take all as true when i take all true it is um, I'll, i'll directly find the um, calculation of total lock stock and barrel so this was about the uh, finding values okay whether it is lock uh, whether it is valid input or invalid input now next i'll have uh, i'll look into the decision table okay so in order uh, decision table for commission okay so firstly assuming that the lock value is minus 1 here pre condition i have to check so here if i take stock is equal to sales is equal to 0 if the sales is equal to 0 i can directly terminate i cannot calculate the commission part at all next i have if i take sales is equal to true sales is between Zero to thousand. Okay, say so if sales is between zero to thousand, I can calculate ten percent commission. If sales is above thousand, if it is up to thousand eight hundred, then I have to calculate fifteen percent. And if it is above thousand eight hundred, then I can calculate twenty uh, percent of the commission. So this was about the decision table for commission problem. Moving on for in decision table, we have to deduce the test case for input data pre condition we have written. So first test case would be minus one. That is terminate. Then I'll take um, invalid. Uh, then I'll take invalid uh, valid lock stock. That is invalid barrel. Uh, first I'll take valid lock stock, lock barrel, stock barrel. One one I'm taking invalid. Invalid. Then here I'll take one invalid. Then here I'll take two invalid. That is valid lock, valid stock, valid barrel. Two two would be invalid. Then here I'll take all invalid. And one case I'll take all valid. 
then here again for commission calculation also sales i'll keep it as zero that is terminate then i'll take 900 900 means it is less than 1000 less than 1000 10% commission should be calculated if it is 1400 1400 and it is less than 1800 less than 1800 and i have to calculate 15% then 2500 that is beyond 1800 then it is 20% commission so this was about decision table for commission problem further we have a theory topic that is fault based learning fault based learning could be asked for 5 marks uh, okay so this is again an important topic so the assumptions regarding fault based learning and all could be asked okay so understanding the definition fault based learning is a technique that aims to identify the defects by targeting specific areas of software where faults are likely to occur so we identify areas where faults are likely to occur and performs perform fault based learning uh, learning so the approach works on uh, the idea that fault exists and that focusing on the such fault uh, we can uncover the significant defects so this is the intro part of fault based learning looking at the assumptions so assumptions are important uh, it was asked in internals and uh, if you refer the previous year papers uh, again assumptions and fault based testing are asked okay so firstly we have uh, presence of faults presence of faults and a fault exists in our software and we have to detect those fault uh, identify those fault then we have faults are rare but significant so uh, we cannot uh, we cannot come up with a statement that uh, faults does not exist only or faults are present everywhere we can say uh, it is concluded that or assume that faults are rare but significant they do have uh, an impact when we perform testing faults cluster together that is faults tend to occur in clusters okay so within the complex or frequently modified code then you have certain faults are predictable so common programming errors can be identified and uh, we can test them so, uh, next we have uh, uh, mutant testing as a proxy for real faults so uh, like simulating the faults through mutations help us to identify the system's robustness then we have uh, the cost effectiveness of target testing so the cost effectiveness of target testing is uh, targeting fault prone areas is more eff efficient than the exhaustive testing so this, these are the assumptions there are further uh, many more assumptions uh, you can go through the pdf um, that will be available in the description Next, we have the mutation analysis. What is mutation analysis? Uh, give an example on the Kelbudu. So, mutation analysis is a type of fault based learning technique where small deliberate changes are made or mutations are made to the program's source code and uh, to create a set of modified versions called mutants. So, these mutants are used to evaluate the effectiveness of test cases. If the test suit uh, defects, the mutant's behavior differs from the original behavior and then we consider the effective one uh, this this test is considered to be effective one. looking at an example or uh, define uh, even number uh, function i'm defining here okay to check if the number is even uh, to return the even number so here return number divided by uh, 2 is equal to is equal to 0 this is the even number condition here i'm performing mutation that is here i'm changing the number modulo 2 to be 1 so when I take number modulo 2 to, to be 1, uh, the output which will be generated are odd numbers. They are not even numbers, right? So I have changed from 0 to 1. So this is what mutation is. Next we have fault based adequate criteria, adequacy criteria. So fault based adequacy criteria refers to the standards uh, used to measure the sufficiency of test suit based on its ability to detect any defects. Uh, in simpler terms, if I explain, uh, they speak whether whatever the test cases we have considered are sufficient or not are they are they enough um, have we considered all possible test cases uh, like for testing our project or the program oh, if i deploy the program will there be any uh, errors uh, for uh, in the future or not so considering all those questions we uh, deduce the fault based adequacy criteria so the criteria assesses whether the tests are adequate by determining if they can uncover specific types of faults whether they can cover area of most likely to contain the faults this ensures that the testing process is thorough uh, through enough to find the critical bugs. Next we have what are the types of mutation analysis. Types of mutation analysis Ali. First one is value mutation. So if I change the value from 0 to 1 it is mutation value mutation. Then decision mutation. If x is greater than y. Now I change from if x is less than y. So again it is decision mutation. Statement. So uh, while for all those loops no, all those statements if I change for loop if I change in for again if i'm adding one more for or return i have returned to again one more return so that will lead to statement of uh, statement mutation next i have uh, variable mutation variable mutation is 
swapping the variable names from a to b have changed to b to a operand operation mutation that is from plus have changed to minus so this was about fault based analysis types of mutation and assumptions of mutation we have tried covering all the important concepts of uh, second module questions would be from these only if you have if you have watched my video completely if you have reached the end till now thank you so much if you have any doubts do let me know in the comments and uh, subscribe to my channel thank you